Hi guys, welcome to part five. This is the final part of my Zebra series on creating character designs and the basic introduction to the interface. Again, all done here with my 15.6, uh, the new Artist Pro from, 15.6 Artist Pro from XP Pen. Highly recommend this um, toy, it is amazing. Okay, so today we're gonna finish up by combining everything we've known, done so far, and I'm going to give you a quick introduction to rendering and some of the new uh, filters in ZBrush uh, 20, and from 2019 to 2020, okay? Uh, using either one of those two versions of ZBrush. So I really hope you've enjoyed and were able to follow my tutorials and enjoy, and I really hope you enjoy using ZBrush with your XP pen. Hi everyone, this is Ken here. This is uh, video five of my ZBrush for beginner series for XP pen. Uh, again, I'm here with ZBrush 2020 on the XP Pen uh, Artist Series 15.6 inch Pro. Um, so, a couple of videos ago, I showed you how to make this demo head, okay? We are going to combine this with the ideas from the last video about creating a body. And then, we are going to, I'm going to show you how to use the rendering in ZBrush with the BPRs, which is the new filters that came out in 2019. Now the good thing about these is you can make very simple sketches and comic book styles that you can bring into Photoshop and draw over or just make some really cool what look like kind of re like Instagram filters with your characters if you want. Okay, so here's my head. It's all in subtools as we've seen before. So what I'm going to do to do this very easy is I'm going to make two object files, one of the head and one of the body and then I'm going to bring them into a new uh, file so we can draw over them or just create very simple BPRs. There are many ways in ZBrush to create uh, multiple subtools from different, um, bringing in different project files, but I'm going to do a very simple thing, which is just export them where all of these parts are combined, make a head and simply make a body and then combine them again in a different file, okay? So here I have the head, I've got the yeah. eyes, two separate subtools, and I'm going to go merge visible. So I come up here, I've got this little button that says merge PM3D, okay? I'm going to click on that. Color changes slightly because now, and the subtool changes, it's all one layer, okay? I'm going to go export to my desktop for now. Export, and we're going to call it alien head underscore A and just let that right up here for me, okay? Now currently, after a bit of a backup, I cannot find my original um, creature file that I made last week, so I'm gonna quickly mock it up as a, as a recap, okay? So I'm gonna go in and go file, I'm gonna go, sorry, document, new document. I won't say where I am in that, okay? And we'll go comma, so we get up our shortcuts, Z spheres, Cave Troll, okay, same one I used before, there he is, okay, and I'll press frame so he jumps into the frame, okay, I'll drag with the move tool as I showed you in the last video, drag out his fingers so they're a bit longer, I'm going to make his back a little larger, and now I know that I have a really small head that I've designed, so I'm going to pull that up there and scale that head back a bit so it's just really small okay and I'm going to pull it so it's just a long neck okay back up again a bit maybe the shoulders maybe the elbows maybe a bit okay very simple stuff I'm not doing anything crazy to this file because most of it is about the sculpting so I'll press A now we have the clay and I'm going to go make polymesh 3D I'm going to go to my basic material Change it to the same material as the other creature so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, there we go. And turn off sub tool, turn on geometry, which we covered before, and I'm going to divide it twice. So I can see up here that it's got a better level. It's up at 647.4 kp. Okay, there is my base creature. Now, again, like we did before, I'm going to press transform. Activate symmetry is already on, so I got both sides. Go to my creature chisel tool. You know, just put some armor on him. Very simply. That do you know what? That kind of looks cool. And I'll use the neck one in the middle to create some neck effect. There, like that. Okay. 
okay? And I'm going to use that same neck effect on the back to create a bunch of ridges going the whole way down his back. Now I have a very high intensity on, which means that it really pops out of the canvas. So just to recap, if I brought the intensity down, there'd be more subtle textures going on it, as you can see. Let me back up again, big enough intensity. Let's do a couple more up as far as the elbow. So I'm going to use these little teeth as horns, just going down the back a bit like that. See? Line it in there. Maybe a couple. Mm -hmm. Talk to yourself how you want to build. This is all about playing and exploring the tech and, and getting used to the software. And I'm going to go press brush, back to standard brush, and like we've done before, I'm going to change to drag effect. And I'm going to turn on one of my base alphas that I like using, such as this one. Change it to sub, so I can cut in, intensity down, much more subtle. I'm going to put in a bit of texture on my creature. I'm going to change that to this line one. And again, in a couple of cut lines, as you can see there. Zoom up, I get a couple of cut lines on my guy. Just in some areas. Okay, across the back there. Back to my creature tool, maybe. And we're going to maybe put some, you know, some scales just under here. Okay. So the scales bring down the intensity again. Scales along there. Zoom out. Scales on the forearms. Just a couple. They're very subtle now, so maybe up the intensity, get some more scales in. This is really kind of a classic creature from the depth kind of look, I think, that's going to come out of this. Maybe it looks a bit like a creature from Hellboy. Okay, very simple, but low, almost like a low poly version or something like that that you could use in a, in a computer game, you know? There's a great little rigging system you could put this guy into on a dog called Mixamo, and you could literally bring in this model and it'll automatically rig it so you can move it. If it's in a T-pose, which this is, well, the arms are a bit down, but T-pose is your base model that you would use for game design. Okay, I'm happy with that. So. Obviously, I should go File, Save As, and I'm going to call it Creature Concept underscore A, and it's on my desktop as a ZPR, which is a ZBrush project file, which we covered before. Okay, project is saved. Okay, I'm going to duplicate my sub tool now. Okay, so sub tool, duplicate. And I'm going to take the top one, and I'm going to press Import, and it's going to replace it with the head I already made. Gaining head, which is on my desktop. I'm going to bring it in. Pop, there's my head. So we will scale. Okay, I'm going to use a little yellow square. I'm going to use the outer one to put the head there. And frame and scale it down to see where I want to fit this head in my creature. See? So we can make the head much smaller. like putting together an action figure. Now it doesn't fit perfectly, but you know with a bit of practice, you can do many, many things. Okay, so there's the head now, put on. So just to recap, I pressed import, I selected my head, brought it in, and using the move, scale, and rotate with the transpose button on, so that it is gizmo, I can rotate and bring that head in. I can even bring it down like that if I want, so it's kind of more of a hunched head. Okay, so there's my figure. I go back and select my body again. I'm going to duplicate it one more time. Turn off the, for just for um, a bit of reassurance. Go back to the original. Then we draw. I'm going to use a snake hook like we used on the head to create a couple more tentacles so the body matches the head a bit more. Okay, so I find my snake tool, snake hook. Make sure my sculptress button is on. Check the draw size. It's quite big. So just. What I need to do, the warning that was popping up is I have too many deformations, so I have to delete the lower divisions. Okay, draw size down. Now, now, do you see the way that's breaking? Turn, press Ctrl Z, turn back on my sculptures, and now we create a couple of templates. And now I'm 
Okay. We'll just do a couple, just to see what we can do. Moving up, maybe some tentacles come off the fingers. Like that. And a couple of dripping ones come off the It's a very simple creature design. Nothing crazy going on at all here. Okay. What I'm going to do next, now that I've done that, let's say I'm happy with it, okay? Happy with my creature design. We are going to try out this button, BPR, which means Best Preview Render, okay? The new buttons, the new features in ZBrush 2019 for this is this place where it says Filters. With all of these lovely effects that will make my model look like a comic book draw, okay? So if I press on Dark Ink, okay? Nothing's gonna happen, it loads, okay? But what I do then is I press, I click, get rid of comma, comma to get rid of that drop down, and press BPR and look what happens. There you go, there's my render. So then I would press document, save, sorry, document, export, and it exports it as a Photoshop file. Make a new folder on my desktop and we'll call it renders. Render. One we'll call it. Render one. Okay. Bit dark. So let's try a different one. Comma. Drop down menu again. Same menu. Let's try an anime ink. Wow, that's looking pretty cool. Document. Export. Render two. Okay. Let, and now if I do anything to the model, I just zoomed up. What happens there is the render uh, preview goes away. I press BPR again, boom, my render comes back. Go export. Now here's the thing. When I export this file, it's at 80, 147 by 850. That would be the size of the document in pixels if I open this in Photoshop. Okay, so I'm going to export. I can change it to a JPEG if I want, but I always keep it as a Photoshop file because that's how I, what I work with. So render three. Okay. And then we're going to go, let's have another look at some of the renders. Some really cool stuff in here. And um, if we go across. Just drag that there. Let's try line render. And we'll do heavy strokes. Press comma, move on like that. Document, export, render. Excuse my typing today. Render four. Um, and let's find another one. Let's try a blueprint. Wow, that's pretty cool. Export. So that's render five. So now we're getting all these different concept versions. I really like that actually. That looks pretty damn cool. Um, let's try a blue and red sketch. Look at that. Export. Render. Now you can overlay these in a different drawing program like Photoshop if you want. And I'm sticking to ZBrush just for these videos. Now, with that said, render's done there, look. There's a guy. I framed him again. Let's zoom up. There's another way to render to get these clays to look their very best, right? So if this was the guy and I wanted to bring him into a different program for Photoshopping over him or whatever. From there like this, looking at me. And I'm gonna go render best and what's going to do is going to take some time see rendering with gi shadows but look at the difference all the beautiful shadows that are coming so when i render because i want to put it in photoshop at a higher i'm going to go first i'm going to press document i press back change the background to white because that was the color i was picked over here okay document press back again maybe to the stick that time There he is with the better shadows. And I press document, export, and I'm gonna call him EPR one. Okay, so that is basically how, to recap, I have created the body with two subtools that I've already created in the other videos. We did a recap on how to sculpt onto the onto the cave troll body. We use the snake hook, we use the creature brushes and we use the alphas in the standard brush and we also brought in the head from our other model so we have this base model now 
If you were to practice just these techniques over these five videos, you need to, what's great about this, just keep practicing and practicing. It's trial and error to really understand how this software works. You need to find out the why yourself for your own thought process and use these tools to build and create your own things. Okay? I really hope these videos have been a help. Um, and the next set of videos I'm going to make are, will be more about my own process with other software. But this is basically how I would use ZBrush for 99% of my projects. Hope you enjoyed and thank you so much for watching.